about 43, I had a question coming out of chapter one, number 87. And here we were given a situation and said, hey, can you just use the key terms from this, this chapter and describe the design of this experiment? And there's a whole bunch of key terms that are listed out in the book. But basically, if you're wondering what I'm thinking of, um, you can go see example 17 in the chapter one lecture packet. And the ones that I did all through here, I just did them alphabetically based on how they list an amount in our book. So the first thing they talk about in an experiment was, hey, was there blinding? Well, I would hope that the evaluators of the drivers wouldn't know which treatment was assigned to the drivers during um, which which session. Like the drivers themselves would know because you're either going to have the normal sleep or the sleep deprivation. So at most, I think this could be single blind. And again, I'm going to hope that the evaluators don't know because if they did, that they could have some bias in there. Now, in terms of a control group, the drivers themselves serve as their own control because they're simulating this driving. They already have their normal amount of sleep. So they have what I would call like a baseline rating, right? We're going to know if we're talking about their performance being measured, we're going to know that performance based off of how they perform when they have normal sleep. So again, the next one they talk about is double blinding, and I kind of touched on this already. It's not possible for the drivers to be blind because they're going to know if they were dealing with the normal amount of sleep or the deprivation. Now, the experimental units, those are the actual people or objects that receive treatments, and we were told we had 19 drivers, so that those are my experimental units. And in terms of explanatory variables, again, keeping in mind for these, these drivers, what am I keeping track of for them? Well, I'm keeping track whether or not they had the normal amount of sleep or the sleep deprivation, right? And then that is going to be what I think explains, and we'll get to the response variable a little bit later, but that's going to explain their performance. So lurking, I'm going to say none because, well, I'm going to hope that you're doing this at the same time of day, whatever these metrics are that you're you're using to gauge their performance, it's the same thing each in each session, I gotta assume it is. Um, and if you come up with a lurking variable, let me know. Um, for the placebo, there isn't any. It's not like I'm giving them a fake set of sleep deprivation. Um, so, so that's not happening. Um, for random assignment, I would hope, and it actually says it here, that the treatments were assigned in random order, meaning some of the drivers started with sleep deprivation for their first session and then had normal sleep. And then a different set of drivers had the normal sleep first and then went to sleep deprivation. You should mix that up because you don't know if the ordering of the treatments might have an effect on your response variable. And your response variable, if I scooch this down here, it is, um, oh, did I do random assignment? Yeah, I just talked about how those were randomly assigned. Excuse me, response variable, it's this performance that we're going to be um, be measuring at the end of this experiment. So performance is on assigned tasks, including this driving simulation. And I just copied these words. I don't know what that's going to entail. I'm going to assume there's going to be some kind of like obstacle course or, or course that's timed and they're going to take a look at, at that, maybe how fast they accomplished that, if they made any driving error, something to that effect. And the treatments, we have, we have the normal amount of sleep and the 20 hours of sleep deprivation. Those were our two treatments in this experiment. All right, so that is number 87. Thanks so much. Bye.